Hey everybody, I hope you guys are doing awesome today. Today what I'm going to show you is something that when I started doing this it really transformed my playing. It really gave me a sense of connection between the scales and the chords I was already playing. But then once I saw this it really helped me understand why it works so well. Today what I'm going to show you guys is a couple different cool scale chord connectors is what I like to call them. It's essentially when we see the scales and the chords interweaving together at the same time. Once you see this, it's going to be a light bulb moment for a lot of you and it's really going to help you guys start making some really nice lead parts, some riff parts when you're playing different progressions. And then once you guys learn this, I'm going to show you how to take it to any key. Let's get started on this today. My name is Shane. Here we go. Okay, so this is going to be in the key of G. So you guys have probably played the key of G a lot. Maybe you've played it like this. This cowboy chord, maybe you played with this bar chord shape here. This is like an E shape is what a lot of people call it caged. But this bar chord shape right here, this would be E at G. So G major. Here's what's really cool. I never realized this until I really started studying the scales and the chords. So this really cool connector here is right here. What this is, is a little bit different uh, pentatonic shape scale position. A lot would probably be familiar with the first position or the second position. This is actually a third position pentatonic uh, G major scale. And it looks, the full chord scale looks like this. But that's a lot to memorize if you guys aren't familiar with that. So. We can use this little six note box right here. So what these notes are is we've got um, A, B, D, E, G, and an A. So pentatonic is a five note box, but we have this extra note in here. So what we do is when we play this, we can play it in like a blues context. So we can play. So we can bend all these notes down, we can bend them up. We can do hammer-ons. cool thing is we can play this over a 12 bar blues progression we could do like this and we can play it over our next chord which would be C it would be the four chord and then we could go to our D chord Something like that. Something I want to point out real quick is this little box shape right here does not contain a uh, C note in it. So what we want to do, a little bit of music theory real quick, we want to land on the 5 of C. So the 5 of the C chord is going to be G right here. So here's a G note. G notes here. So when we're trying to start playing little riffs and little lead ideas, we either want to land on the root chord tone of the chord that we're playing over we want to try to hit the five of that chord so for example the c what we're going to do is hit this note right here g we're going to resolve to it so we can do something like this and then back to the g chord then to the D, which is D is right here. D is also right here, but this kind of gets out of the scale, so I don't want to confuse you guys too much. Um, so we would just play this right here. Here's a little 
example, playing over the backing track with this. I want to preface real quick, you can play this full third position pentatonic uh, G major scale. You can play all that stuff if you wanted to. So you can play over here. It's a little bit into other scales and pieces there, but you can play that if you want. But the premise of this lesson is that you guys start playing this little uh, shape right here, this six note shape. Okay, so the next idea I wanna show you guys is if you go back here to this G bar chord shape right here, there's a really cool little house shape right below that. So look at this. So if you leave your finger here, we're well, gonna play this. We're going to take all our fingers off except the middle finger. This is a B note. So this is the major third of G. So that would be minor third. But we're not going to play that B flat. So B. Check this out. We have this shape right here. So notice that's the same notes as this little pattern. Except the B's up here, but. Exact same notes. So we've got B, D, E, G, and A. So when we're playing like our little 12 bar blues vamp, we can do. to the C, to the G. That little shape there is awesome because now it gives us a whole new avenue of stuff to play. And the really cool thing about that is that we can hammer on from this major third. We can play all the same little riff licks that we did here, up here, so. Whatever you come up down here, you can play up here. Here's a little example of me playing with that. Okay, so something else I want to show you guys. Um, when we're playing this position, right? This is the G major. So we've got our little box here. Let's move this all the way up since we're playing this in the key of G, the blues, the G, C, and D. Let's move it up here to the eighth fret. This is going to be 
our G note. We can play the exact same little licks because here's our C note here on the eighth fret. So we can play our C bar chord. Play the same one here. And then we can go up to the just uh, a fret, two frets here to the tenth fret. This is going to be D. time on the D when we're playing in the 12 bar blues but it gives you guys options you can also play the box shape here all sorts of little ideas you guys can use okay so let's say we're gonna play in a different key let's play in the key of A so here's on our fifth fret key of A here's the A note Put our shape here. Then we go to the next one, B, D. And we go up to the E. Okay, so take all these shapes and scale chord connectors I showed you today, move them to any key. Once you know the key that you're playing in, you know you can play those little cool shapes and little cool licks and riff ideas. It's going to be something that's going to be really helpful for you. You guys have a super day. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.